Good morning, Destiny players, and welcome to a new build video. I am Bladeburger, your local down, up, right, right, down guy, and this week we're on the Hunter class, a build for those who don't like to be shot. Do the goodies that the algorithm likes. Burger love you a long time. Let's begin. This build is an evasive little bastard, based around invisibility, both giving it and receiving it. This build works across the game, from raids to grandmasters to dropping 380mm barrages on your local automaton invasion. Wait, wrong game. Anyways, the exotic that this build is based around is the Omni Oculus chest piece. This exotic gives a second smoke bomb. It also gives an extra 50% damage resist when invisible. If you make an ally invisible with your smoke bomb, you gain a whopping 50% melee energy back per ally. So two allies made invisible is a full melee recharge. This does overcap by the way, four allies is 200% energy, or two full charges. In most activities, it'll be 100% energy back. There are several ways to make this exotic shine. Let's start on the class stuff. For class, we're on Void Hunter. For super, the choice is yours. Do note that going invisible with Spectre Blaze does not give the Omni Oculus damage resist. For dodge, we're on Gambler's Dodge. Dodge near enemies to gain a full melee charge back. Redundancy in case we somehow don't get our melee energy back. For grenade, choose what you please. This is a melee build after all. For aspects, Trapper's Ambush. Press your hotkey for this move to catapult towards the ground, deploying a smoke bomb upon landing. Allies are made invisible if they're caught within the radius. The smoke from the bomb weakens enemies. We also have Stylus Executioner. Defeating an enemy that has a void debuff on them makes you invisible and gives wall hacks. You can also then melee an enemy while invisible to weaken them. For fragments, Echo of Harvest. Killing enemies with a weakened debuff makes an aura power and a void breach upon their untimely demise. Void Breaches give class ability energy. Echo of Persistence, any void buff applied to you lasts longer. Overshields, Invisibility, and Devour count as void buffs. Echo of Provision, damaging enemies with grenades gives melee energy back. 3% per damage tick if it's a damage over time grenade, but 8% if it's a single explosion grenade. Echo of Starvation, picking up an aura power or a void breach gives Devour, which gives health and grenade energy on kills. So there's the class nonsense, let's talk weapons and stats. For weapons, I'd recommend Void Weapons to fit with the synergy. I personally use a new Rasaraga with three Rhine Wounds and Onslaught. It's pretty good. Pick your favorite Void Weapons. If not, swap out the Siphon mods on your helmet to go with whatever you pick to use. For stats, I recommend Max Mobility, as we get melee charges back instantly on dodges and covering allies with invisibility juice. Distribute other stats as you please. Go for triple 100s if you're that kind of player. Take a shower if you're also one of those players as well. Now let's get to the mods and stuff. For mods, this build is centered around your class ability. Most melee builds on Hunters are. Like my Caliban's Hand and Shards of Galinar builds, melee but based around class ability. We use Kickstarts and other various mods to ensure it comes back quick. On Helmet, we have Harmonic Siphon. Double kills are higher with weapons matching our subclass type, making Orbor Power. The other two mod slots are Flex Slots, use whatever you want. I personally use Hands On, giving more super energy on powered melee kills. Yes, this does count Deadfall Smoke Bomb kills. I also have Heavy Ammo Finder, increasing heavy drop chance on kills. On Arms, Double Focusing Strike, gain class ability energy on powered melee damage. 17% energy with 2 mods, 7 second cooldown for some reason. We also have Impact Induction, which is the same thing but for grenade damage, 12% with 1 copy. On Chest Piece, Flex Slot for all the mods. I have all resist mods though. On Boots, Double Insulation, giving class ability energy on orb pickup, 5% energy per orb with 2 mods. We also have Better Already, which starts health regen on orb pickup. On class item, Utility Kickstart. When you use your class ability, consume any armor charges you have to gain back class ability energy. Requires one or more armor charges to activate. Gives 28% energy back with 3 armor charges and 1 mod, which are gained through orb pickup by default. We also have Reaper. After using your class ability, you have 10 seconds to get a weapon kill. If you do, make an armor power. Yippee! The last mod is Distribution, giving us 4% ability energy and 2% super energy when we use our class ability within 15 meters of an enemy. We dodge for our melee. It works. As per the usual, here's the overview of the build, all the mods and stuff. Artifact mods not needed. Study the mods, etch them into your brain, make sure to remember it for the Burgestapo. They're coming for you. Now to how this build plays. This build is extremely consistent. You may annoy your blueberries around you with how often you yeet your flimsy body towards them like you're a Helldiver heading right for the Bile Titosi. 
No one watches this far, I'm safe to say that. Anyways, this build is angled towards support, with your allies making this build work best. More allies helped means more melee energy. Easy weaken and easy get out of shit free cards. In Grandmasters, taking any damage puts you right to red, but just yeet to the ground to make enemies de-aggro and help out your buds. Use the chance to revive the weak link in your fire team. You know who they are. It's a pretty active build, with you constantly needing to use your invisibility suppository on your allies to make them feel better. More active than a few other builds I've showcased. Try it for yourself today, and let me know how it does. Thank you all for watching. See you in the next one. Blade Burger out.